All right. I want to talk about getting out of the city. Um, this is something that is... heavy on my mind. As you saw in the beginning, the fights. Had someone fighting up here, had someone fighting down there. Uh, this has happened quite a bit. Um, I can't count the number of fights that I have heard. Now, I didn't record all of them. Those just those two are recorded. But give you an idea. I can be going in the parking garage, right? And someone can be in the parking garage holding their phone like this, screaming into their phone, having a fight with someone. This has happened, I cannot, numerous times. This is numerous times. So the fights, the, also another thing is I live around a bunch of young people who don't have normal jobs. So they like to be up in the middle of the night, bumping their music one, two, three o'clock in the morning. Oh, also the noise. Um, it's very, very noisy living in the city. Uh, one of the things that will happen that happens around here is you have a lot of people who have these fast modified cars. And, you know, because the traffic is so tight here during the day that what they like to do, they like to race at one, two, three o'clock in the morning. And you can hear it and they'll wake you up. Also, there's a fire station that's close by. The fire station's always going out, so it is very, very noisy. Uh, elevator. <laughs> I actually got caught in the elevator. I hit the elevator, then it kind of went up and down. It kind of dipped and it just stopped. Uh, it took them about 45 minutes to get me out the elevator. Now, I will say, Crime in this building is from let, let's talk about types of crime for burglaries for people coming in it hasn't happened because we have a concierge so it's kind of hard to get up here without being let in but um, my vehicle was broken into this is one of the things that happened they hit not just my vehicle they hit a lot of vehicles all the vehicles with heavy dark tent the ve uh, it was the bmw there's so much tent you can't see in my car there was no way for them to see anything. They just broke my window just to look around. They broke my window just to look around. I was about between getting the window replaced because it was the passenger side window and getting it retinted that was close to 600 bucks. And this, this is one of the things with the demo people. The, the demo people will do this type of stuff. They will break your stuff. They will do things like this, cost you all types of money but because they're demo people and they don't really care that this was something else. And also uh, trying to get that fixed took like a, a bottle. I couldn't get it immediately fixed because they didn't have that glass. They had to order the glass. I went to a place on Jimmy Carter 
they didn't have a glass. And then essentially they sent someone here to replace the glass. And that was about two weeks just trying to get that done. Because, uh, you know, it, was, it got reported. Now, I wasn't the only one that hit. They hit like 30 cars and they just broke, you know, someone actually just broke my, you know, my passenger side window just to open up my glove box to look around. So that was another thing that happened. Uh, parking. Parking is really interesting. When I first moved here, uh, parking was tight, 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 tight. On uh, Thursday, Thursday to Sunday, there was no guest parking. You know, I would have someone come over and it was always a problem because there was no guest parking. Then they got smart and they started to, they brought in boots. So, and th this is one of the issues with the parking light. That's interesting. you have uh, someone come in here and if you don't register them in the system, they have a, a floating boot person that comes around they'll put a boot on your vehicle, which kind of brings me up to the Airbnbs. There are multiple Airbnbs in this building. Uh, they've tried to shut them down, but they keep coming back. Um, and this right here, if you have an Airbnb in this building, you've got to meet the person to get them the key fob, because that's the only way that they can access, they can, that's, that's the only way they can leave the floor and go to the garage. They can get to the first floor without a key fob, but you know, um, there was um, a lot of Airbnbs, because I would go to the Airbnb website and I would see this unit and I would see the door. And I was like, wait a minute, that's my building. And at one point I narked, I straight up narked and I've, uh, to my, um, knowledge, they're still here. They're still here. There's one, the traffic has really gone way down. There was one on my floor and the traffic has gone way, way down. So I don't know what they're done. The evictions. All right. Now this is something that, uh, there was a massive wave of evictions and this is one of the reasons that the parking lot has cleared up. The parking lot has cleared up quite a bit. Um, today I was out and I came in and there was like 12 empty spots in the guest parking. That didn't happen my first year, but the evictions. And this is, the, the rent in this building is 3,200 for a one bedroom up to 9,000 for the penthouse. And this is one of the things I saw with the eviction. I saw, because essentially there's, uh, you take the elevator down to the basement level and there's where you can throw your boxes and stuff. And that's where they were putting, well, there, there was many areas that they were putting the eviction stuff. They were putting stuff down there. They were putting stuff in the evicted stuff in the parking garage. They were, I mean, it, it was just really, it was, it was. seriously a hot mess for a minute uh, really 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 messed up but I know a lot of people I wouldn't be surprised if it was like 60 some people got evicted um, one of the things that I find to be interesting is um, 
I will look in the garage and I will see, I'm calling them Rudy Poo cars, right? And I'm like, why would you be driving that and paying this kind of rent? But once again, this is what people do. Oh yeah, back to the elevators. First year, uh, it was great. This year, the elevators have been down. We have been down to one elevator and this promotes you waiting five, 10, 12 minutes for an elevator to come to get off your floor. So that's another reason I'm leaving. And you know, it, it, it's just, it's just wild. So we talked about the fights, the weed, the parking. Oh, and the elevators. Oh, and the homeless people, the number of homeless people in Buckhead is kind of staggering. They're literally everywhere. So we got the homeless people and then the city Buckhead is trying to succeed from Atlanta and take all this income and create its own system, its own police department, its own fire department. Uh, this is something that Sandy Springs did like 30 years ago. And then Sandy Springs did it. Brookhaven did it. So essentially all of the boroughs with the money want to get away from the city of Atlanta. So, you know, my first year here, it was good. This is something that I've always, I've always wanted to live in the highway. I would like rent a hotel room in Buckhead. And I was like, what would it be like to live here? So this has kind of been an itch. And, you know, moving out of the house was such a nightmare because I had a home gym. I had so much stuff that I pretty much knew that I wanted out of here, but I re-signed the lease because I didn't want to deal with moving again. And essentially this let it get out of my system because you know this move is going to be much less hassle because it's going to be a lot easier getting out of here than it was getting in here. But you know just being here with the city and you know it's it's wild. There there's something about this part of the town that just attracts a certain kind of person that I don't really want to be around just to be up. I, I really don't want to be around these people because like the fighting, the screaming, the weed, the noise, all this other stuff. And I never experienced any of this kind of stuff in Sandy Springs. I never had a situation where uh, I never heard a neighbor fighting. I never heard and did the, the music and the partying and all this other stuff. And this kind of gives me a glimpse into what's going to happen in the future in the cities. I think in the cities, this is where stuff is going to go down. This is where things are going to get nasty. Um, because I'm just looking at what happens here and I'm speaking from personal experience, all the stuff that's going on and also the space. Um, this is a lot of money. This is a lot of money to live here and it's more than what my house was. And you just don't have a lot of space. You don't have a lot of room and it's just, I'm at a point where I can't wait to get out. I can't wait to get out. And that's just me. You know, it's not, I feel that anyone who lives in the high rise and Buckhead is going through the same thing. Um, this is just something that comes with living here. There are some people who live here who love it. They love it. I mean, you know, but also it's crowded. At one point I was going to lifetime gym, which is 268 bucks per month. Crowded. You get off a piece of equipment. If you, I mean, it, it was just, it's just really, really crowded. But with the cities, these problems that I have seen are just a part of what's going on in the cities. In the cities, like if you look at Target shutting down stores in Philadelphia, what you're going to see is just going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse and worse in the city. Uh, from the traffic, from the crime, from the homelessness, it's just going to get worse, 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 worse. And, you know, it's kind of crazy 
looking at what has happened in just two years. Cause like my first year, it was great. Uh, I met a lot of cool people. There was a lot of fun. And then about month 10 is when the reality started to set in. But yeah, uh, there, there will be a lot of people who will come to town. They will move to this area without knowing what they're getting themselves into. And um, it's going to get much, much worse in cities across the United States because this is something that is happening all over the place. This is something that is going on. This is something that is pretty pronounced. And also the shopping. Um, I have all kinds of shopping like right next door. Uh, Phipps Plaza is next door. Uh, Linux is Linux is walking distance. Um, and I don't really don't go there because I hate going to Linux. Linux, like what, what they've done is like, it used to be you could park fairly close to the entrance. Now all that's reserved parking and all the good parking is now reserved. And then you can get park in the boondocks and then you can make that hike into the mall. And you know, like I said, I typically don't like going to Linux because it's crowded. It's inconvenient. Um, for me, for me, there's a lot of people who be up in Linux all day long, but you know, what I am seeing, what I'm experiencing is just telling of what's going to happen with the cities. And, you know, unless you get into a building that has an older population, it's going to be totally different because we, we have a trash chute. And the trash chute, the, the nightmares with the trash chutes, because when first year, trash chute was fine. I went there, there was never an issue. Then we started to have issues with the trash chute. Like you would go in there and there would be trash in the chute. There's a chute, you pull a handle, put your trash in there, right? These folks wouldn't do that. They would just put it in the room, let it stack up. And I mean, it, it got really, really bad at one time where they had to send someone from the building to check the shoot to make sure that it wasn't crowded. And once we had these a lot of evictions, that stopped. We had a whole bunch of evictions and that stopped. So my thoughts are it was a person who got evicted that was doing that, which is kind of funny. And also some other little, you know, this stuff may seem little, but once you take it all together with the fights, the weeds, the parking, the homeless, the elevators, the city, people around here do some of the craziest stuff. Like you're trying to come in and you would have someone who would just literally stop right in the middle. They would not pull to the side. They'd be right in the middle. They would stop and they would sit there for a minute. This is a constant problem constant problem and um, one day I was out there and this lady just stopped and I gave her a few minutes then I started honking I was like move you know and she got out her vehicle and she said because you in the porch don't mean you own nothing I was like you're in the middle of the driveway you don't own that and we kind of got into it and then uh, the security came out and told her she had to move I don't know why she stopped there. I don't know why she had an attitude, but essentially you're seeing a lot of demo people move into the sector and create these issues. Um, the lack of manners, the lack of coof is just like, I mean, seriously. Um, and also the way you get in here is it can be, I'm surprised there aren't more accidents. It's a, it's an accident trap, but I'm out. I'm getting out and I am going on to bigger and better facilities. But one of the things is like, I gotta say, when I first moved in here, I really, really liked it. I really, really liked it. But um, now I'm at a point where I just can't wait to get out and you know, enjoy some peace and quiet and other stuff because now what's happening in the cities 
is just getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. What's going on in the cities is getting deeper and deeper. Um, this is where I think the first wave the, of the new America is going to hit. It's going to hit the cities because Buckhead used to be the place to be, the nice clubs and everything. It, it is. It has changed. It has really, really, really changed. And one of the things that I'm seeing is like there, there's Buckhead and there's the edge of Buckhead. And I'm seeing that those areas are starting to become contaminated as well. And what one of the things you have is, and th this is one of the things that kinds of um, blows my mind, is the number of people that you have who have access to money, but have no good manners, have no class, like the, the, the fights, the number of fights. I can't count all the fights that I've heard, you know, and like uh, uh, the people above me, they moved. I can tell they moved because there used to be fights, used to be a lot of weed on the balcony, and then it just stopped. And once again, with the eviction, with the evictions that just stopped. And then down below me, girl was on the phone having another loud fight and i was just sitting there like what is up with these people what is up with these people but i feel that because it's a younger demographic is one of the reasons that we're having all of these issues and one of the things that i've experienced is there, there's two types of people in this building. There's a, there's a lot of nice people. Uh, there's some people, there's some upclass people, but the demo people are in this building and they're paying the high rent. And this is something else I saw because when I go down to take trash and stuff, I will see the stuff that get, the people who got evicted, right? They always have cheap, crappy furniture, always. I'm just sitting there like, why would you pay rent and have that cheap furniture up in here? If you know, you have any ideas, please put it in the comments. But I consistently see that people are um, out here just, it's just crazy. It's just crazy. And just my personal experience is just a warning sign for anything that's happening into the city. Um, I probably will never move back in the city ever again, just based on the things that I've had happen, personal things. And fortunately, you know, um, I made some really different decisions. And one of the things that I'm looking at is security and protection. So that's going to be a big part. But one of the things that you have to be aware of in this new wave of the cities. Because this is just Atlanta. This is going to hit every city. Every city is going to have this problem. Every city is going to have these issues. And as people fall into the demo class, it's going to get worse, worse, and worse, and worse, and worse. It's just going to get much, much worse as people get into these situations where they just, they can't make it. They just can't make it. They're going to be trying to make it. They're going to be trying to do the things that they want to do. But, um, it, it's, 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 it's amazing that paying this kind of money to live here and to be having these issues in my opinion, these issues, because I was paying less money living in Sandy Springs and I never had none of these issues, none of these issues. And it, it's just, I'm out. I am out. I am out. I am out because, um, and also I need more space because the thing is, this is 1700 square feet which I knew what I was getting into before I moved here. And this is why I had to get rid of a lot of stuff moving out of here. And then it's just going to be, let's just say I'm gonna have a lot of extra room. I'm gonna have a lot of extra room. 
And one of the things that I'm beginning to see is, oh, the repossession, the repo man. I did not know that the repo man can get a build a car out. Like, let me, let, let me go ahead and kind of give you what I saw with the repo man. Guy came in with a tow truck, right? But it's a parking deck, right? This guy had floats. He had these floats. He put these four floats under the car, hooked up the car. He did this quick. He did it quick because he was like, boom, 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 boom. Hooked it up, tied the wheels down to the floats. And then he got out of the deck because I was behind him. And then when he got out the deck, he stopped and then put the car on the tow truck and took the floats off. So they can repossess your car out of a parking deck because, you know, with the you know, way tow trucks are built, especially the really big tow trucks, they can't fit in here. But this guy had like a, one of the regular tow trucks. I was just like, and he was repoing um, a Bentley. It was a Bentley. So they, the repo man can get you up in here. <laughs> the repo man will not be stopped. But yeah, there, there's a lot of stuff that's going on. A lot of things are changing. And it's, it's making me sit back and really, really think about decisions that I got to make for myself moving forward because um like i said the repo man ain't playing and the these attitudes these attitudes that i see around here are just crazy now with the rent when i got my renewal lease my rent was like 500 dollars less than what it is now so this is one of the signs of the time. So the rent's definitely going down here. So maybe a one bedroom isn't any more 3000, maybe it's 2,500, but still, you know, it's, it's, it's just wild. But this is just what's coming in the cities. This is just what's happening in the cities and it's gonna hit. And the big issue is the demo people, the people who just don't care, the people who just really do not care. The demo people are the reasons that I believe the cities are going corrupt, really, really going corrupt. All right. So once again, I still have the sale going on. You can access in the links below and I will talk to you guys in the next one.